Hello, my friends, and welcome back. <sighs> Today, we're going to be learning how to grieve your thin body by Classy Fatty Babe. This is a reminder to take your medicine. But anyway, I want to talk about what it's like to be a fat person grieving the idea of a thin version of you. So trigger warning, I'm going to be talking about fat phobia, eating disorders, and maybe some other stuff. But anyway. Grieving the thin version of yourself. So basically, this is called giving up. Okay, you know that thin body that you never achieved? Give up on that. As fat people, we are sold this narrative that we are not complete people. To the rest of the world, we are a before picture. We are an inconvenience. We are desexualized and for fat women especially, defeminized. We are a thin person trapped in a fat body. So you're saying you are not a thin person trapped in a fat body. This is your final form, is it? I've put in zero work and I'm done. We are constantly sold this narrative that we are in limbo. I mean, think about it. I mean, think about it. How many movies or TV shows or books have you seen or read that revolved around a character losing weight? So you are not in limbo, and this is you living your best life. If you were thin and normal like everyone else, this is what you would be doing. Making TikToks explaining how good it is to be fat. Whatever you would do if you were at your ideal weight, is you being you. This ain't it. People even refer to weight loss as a journey. Is it not a journey? Is it bad to do stuff that takes a lot of time? Is it bad to delay gratification so that we may enjoy the benefit more later? Like, uh, I don't expect to know Spanish the first day after I go for a couple lessons. You understand? Or, or do you not understand? It is a journey. And in fact, the journey is more important than the destination, as they say. Not to be a cornball. When fat people are talking about fighting for basic rights and respect, we're t They are talking out of their ass. Nobody's uh, taking away your rights or not giving you respect. Dude, who do you think you are? Told that if we don't like it, to just lose weight. Yeah. More so we tell you to just lose weight when you're complaining about not fitting in airline seats or being able to walk through a turnstile. Our solution? Just lose weight. We definitely ain't making bigger turnstiles and bigger seats just because you don't want to lose weight. For the millionth time. Us people that actually work hard are not going to do the hard work of recreating the infrastructure around the whole world. That turnstile is not wide enough. Take it out and put in a wide one. Who do you think is going to do the work of removing the normal size turnstile and putting in an extra wide one? Is it going to be you, sweetie? Huh? You're going to go put on your construction outfit and go out there and start changing the world? I don't think so because you can't even walk up a flight of stairs. So how are you going to go change the infrastructure of the world and make it more accommodating for big people? Oh, oh, you're not. Oh, what's that? Oh, you want us to do it. Oh, get fucked. Because our personhood, our lives, our personalities, our passions aren't relevant to society. Your personhood, personalities, passion, da 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 da, aren't relevant to society. My personhood isn't relevant to society either, damn it. Whatever that means. You know, you would be better off not using a word that you don't understand the meaning of than to use it improperly and look like a pompous, pretentious ass who also doesn't understand the language they're speaking. Unless we are thin or actively trying to become thin. Uh, I got a newsflash for you. Even if you're thin or trying to become thin, we still don't give a fuck. I don't. I don't give a damn. You think I go down the street, I see a, an obese person and I see a thin person, I'm like, screw that obese person. But hey, how you doing, thin person? No, I'm like, Screw both of those people equally. You can both get fucked, as far as I'm concerned. I remember once in treatment for my eating disorder, we did this super traumatic activity where we had to write down a long list of things we wanted to do, achieve, or accomplish in our lifetimes. And then the group leader said, now cross out all of the activities that would require you to lose weight. Okay, so you were in some sort of group therapy for binge eating, I'm guessing, because you're overweight. And then... Um, they had you do a super traumatic 
exercise where you wrote words on a paper. I know that can be extremely traumatizing, but um, so you wrote words on paper and then they said to cross out all the stuff that involved weight loss and that was traumatizing for you. You know, it kind of sounds like you might have gone to the wrong meeting. If the person leading the group is encouraging people to cross out stuff related to weight loss, it sounds like you were in a group for restrictive EDs, so I can see why you would be confused and or traumatized, because none of that information is for you. All the stuff about weight loss on your list, instead of crossing it off, you need to circle it, circle it, and put asterisks next to it, like super important, highlight it too if you need to. Yeah, so uh, I'm guessing that they, they ended up at the wrong meeting, right? They were supposed to take a left at the first hall to go to the binge eating meeting, but they took a left at the second hall and went all the way down until they ended up in Delusionville, which is where they would have to be to think that they need to be in a restrictive ED group. And for me, that was quite a few. For me... Oh, I haven't even been reading the words on the screen. Let's take a look at this. And these were not things that being fat can be a natural barrier that aren't anybody's fault, like horseback riding. What? If you're a danger to horses by going on their back, that is your fault. What do you mean it's not anybody's fault? Everything is somebody's fault. And anything related to your physique is your fault. She was trying to make the point to people that you don't have to lose weight to achieve your goals. Okay. Yeah, no, that would be good advice for people with a restrictive ED. If you're morbidly obese and you have a binge eating disorder, um, them telling you to not worry about losing weight is probably the worst freaking advice they could ever give you. And for thin people that aren't gatekept from society because of their weight, that's true. Um, thin people aren't gatekept from society? Are you familiar with the term gatekeeping? I don't think you are. Okay. If you eat so much that you can't fit through the turnstile to get into the building, there's nobody gatekeeping you. And that's not the correct use of the phrase, okay? Gatekeeping would be like if a bunch of morbidly obese people got together and told someone who was not quite as morbidly obese that they're not fat enough. That's what gatekeeping is. It's got a sense of elitism to it. When people are into a certain hobby or whatever, and then others try to join, and then they're like, Tch. You, you don't even know Scooby-Doo's real name, dude. You call yourself a fan? That's gatekeeping. Gatekeeping is not when you perceive society to be holding you back from doing certain activities. Especially when the only one who held you back from doing those activities was you. But it didn't occur to this thin therapist that there might be a fat person in the room with a different lived experience. Um, yeah, because there weren't supposed to be any fat people in the room. This was for restrictive EDs. You're in the wrong meeting. The thin therapist? Maybe that was your first clue. You go in the room and everybody's thin. You're the only morbidly obese person in the restrictive ED group. Uh... I did that activity three years ago and I still think about it. Be Is it still traumatizing you? The way they had you write words on a paper? Did that, uh... Traumatize? Did that traumatize you? Do you need, do you need a hug? Do you need to be held, sweetie? Come here, come here. Come here give your boy a hug. Because I'm always reminding myself that the things that I'm not allowed to do or don't have access to because of my fatness are not my fault. The things that you don't have access to because of your fatness are not your fault. So whose fault is it? Is it my fault? Is it my fault that the turnstile isn't big enough to accommodate somebody of your rotund size? Um, I didn't realize that I'm Captain save -a where I need to go around reconfiguring, reconstructing society to accommodate obese people. Uh, here's an idea. If you want stuff to be more accommodating, you do it. Get off your ass and you go install a bigger turnstile. Let's say you hang down from a suspension harness so you can install the heavier duty cables in the freaking elevator. The funny thing is, obese people could never install any of the accommodations that are there for obese people. Can an obese man climb up a ladder? <laughs> yeah, if obese people can't even climb up a simple flight of stairs, how are you going to go around installing and constructing stuff? Oh, right, you want me to do it. I'm not gonna. You ever heard that old saying? Live by the cake, die by the cake? I am not responsible for the ways other people treat me. Well, that's true, but what the fuck does that have to do with the price of tea in China? and how they gatekeep me from simple parts of life. Once again, that's not the correct use of the term gatekeep. 
I think you're trying to say that they prevent you from accessing certain parts of life or something. That's not gatekeeping, okay? You're not trying to fit into some exclusive elite club and then we're pushing you away. That's what gatekeeping is. I explained it earlier. Please go rewatch the earlier part. I don't know a single fat person who hasn't thought... Who hasn't made it past the age of 40. But I'll do or wear oh. that thing once I'm thin. Because we are taught that we are a before photo, that we cannot be authentically fat. Because so you're saying you are not a before photo, you are complete. This is you as a complete, done, perfect, finished human being. That's weird because I'm always working on myself. Not just physically, but mentally and spiritually. And I feel like I'm never complete. This is a work in progress that requires constant attention. But you though, you're good to go. You've done no work. And you're done. You're good to go, baby. Look at this poem I wrote. Bro, that's just a blank piece of paper. Shut up. You and your gatekeeping. Because according to them, deep down, there's a thin person just fighting to get out. I yeah, and they're having a really hard time getting past all these extra layers of adipose tissue to get out of there. I feel like our society pushes me to be one of two things. I can either be constantly happy and positive about my body, or I can hate myself and try to lose weight. That's the only two options? So you can either just be positive about your body, even if it doesn't deserve it, or you can hate yourself and try to lose weight. That's weird because I thought the act of losing weight was love. I thought that that was actually loving yourself, doing hard work that, you know, maybe it's a little uncomfortable, but we do it anyway because we really love ourselves and we're willing to push through a little bit of discomfort to get that end goal, to get that body that we want, to be able to do some pull-ups, to be able to jog. But I am a whole complete person. I am allowed to have conflicting emotions. I can respect and nourish my body and hold anger and resentment towards how others treat me respect and nourish your body while holding anger and resentment against others hmm. okay so let's translate that i can keep eating whatever garbage that i want and then ignore people's ridicule i can participate in whatever kind of crappy behavior i want and i don't deserve to be ridiculed for that all right then stop living in society <laughs> And I think that anger is an important part of my self-respect because it means I'm no longer blaming my body for just existing. Okay, who are you blaming now? You shouldn't be blaming your body anyway. You should be blaming you. Your body is an extension of you. Your body is a reflection of your mental state. If this looks like shit, it's because this ain't right. All right, so today we've learned how to grieve your thin body that you never had and you never put in any work to accomplish. You've never had it and you never will have it apparently, so you may as well grieve it now. And of course we grieve it by pretending to not care what anybody else says. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.